Hello, BookTube. I had a few errands to run this morning, and it wasn't much of a stretch of the imagination to run those errands near the Prattle Bookshop. So that's what I did. <laughs> I went to the Prattle Bookshop, uh, which is, uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, I'm getting the impression that there are no new people to the channel, which is terrific. That is absolutely terrific. 1450. 1450 looks like where we're going to stay for the rest of time. That's still weirdly large, but at least it's not 15K. So 1450 looks like where we're going to stay. Unless YouTube is doing another one of its subscriber purges. I'm perfectly okay with it. But if there are any newcomers out there, uh, the Brattle Bookshop is a used bookstop in the, in the heart of downtown Boston. And they are terrific. They have a huge turnover of stock. Is that going to be too dramatic? <laughs> uh, they have a huge turnover of stock, reasonable prices, and a sale lot next door to the store uh, that has thousands more books for $1, $3, or $5. So not a usual, you know, a couple of barrows or even a few uh, wheeled carts like are outside of the Strand in New York City, but a whole area for shopping. And the books aren't organized in any way except by price. Sometimes there'll be a vestige of order because, you know, if somebody sells the Brattle 50 books about the American Revolution or 50 hardcovers of the Simenon novels, they're going to get boxed up where they're bought. They're going to get driven back to the shop. They're going to be put down in the basement. Who knows how long they'll sit down there. Then they'll be brought up box after box. But, you know, they, they might, those, those concentrations might break up then, but often they don't. And that'll be the only thing that will that will allow you to see a bunch of similar books near each other out in the sale lot, which is where I spend most of my time. <laughs> so I was very happy to see. It was a very bright, warm, humid morning. First thing this morning, I was very happy to see the carts out. The last time I was there, they were covered and tarped over because it was on off and rain. Uh, but it's a, it's a joyful thing to just... At, browse the, the, sale car, the sale lot at your ease. It's a joyful thing. And it doesn't have the same kind of overhead as browsing a bookstore at your leisure service because you're not going to outprice yourself out in the sale lot. It, it, everything's too cheap for that. You'll, you'll reach your carrying limit before you reach your spending limit. Uh, so I love to go out there and I bought, I got a ton of books. <laughs> so let's go through these and see what we have. Of course, with the Brattle, for me, there are, there are two goals. One is to follow whims, which you can certainly do when the books are a dollar a piece. You can follow whims. You can see something, say, I'd never heard of this before. Looks kind of interesting. And just get it because you don't have to worry about how much money it costs. And the other thing, that's one thing that's a lot of fun out in the sale lot. That sort of goes along with the fact that it's not organized in any way. Another thing that, you, that I always want at the Brattle in the sale lot and inside the shop is to get keepers. I know it doesn't seem that way, considering how many books I take in here, but I get, I go through a lot of books, too. I get rid of a lot of books. They don't just pile up here, uh, although there are a lot of books here. <laughs> there are a lot of printed paper books here, considering how many e-books I read every day. Uh, but another, the other goal of the Brattle for me is to find keepers, things that I'm, that I'm not just thinking at the moment I might want, but that I'm going to want to keep. Ideally, what I want is a perfect little book room. I have, I have a little book room that I, you know, where my ancient bed is, that is lined with books. And those are the ones that are the real keepers. Those are the ones I would keep last if I got rid of everything else. But there are still thousands of books everywhere else here. So, uh, but anyway, I don't really know. All of these were, were impulse buys I'm very happy about. I don't really know, really know how many of them are going in the little book room. I don't know how many have the chance of being keepers. We will see. Uh, but we have some paperbacks to start with. Let's start with the paperbacks. So we have... Uh, a Ruth Rendell murder history. This is a, a demon in my view, which I confess was a cover buy. I got it for this lovely cover artwork. Uh, this is, I remember this book. I read it. Uh, didn't look like this. The paperback that I had didn't look like this. But it's a, it, if I remember correctly, it's the story of a meek and mild guy who has a, a mannequin that in his basement that he just kills ritualistically over and over again. So, of course you are expecting that he is going to branch out to a living being that happens to look like his mannequin. I call this one Elaine. 
Uh, this is, if I remember correctly, this was uh, just a terrific example of the way that Ruth Randall can just bring you inside the psychological world of her damaged characters. Almost, I think that it's supposed that's supposed to be the the star attraction here, the, not the the sleuth, but. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to rereading this. I have all of, I'm pretty sure I have all of Ruth Randall as ebooks, but I, I love these old, this old paperback here. So I grabbed that. Okay, then I grabbed this next one here. I don't know what this is doing in a plastic bag. I guess that's for collectors. I am not a collector at all. So I'm going to take this out of the plastic bag. Uh, I'm just going to read this. Probably the person who originally owned it thought it was collectible and maybe didn't want it to fall apart. Uh, it's going to fall apart. Uh, this is a Tarzan novel. This is Tarzan and the Valley of Gold by Edgar Rice. No, <laughs> no, it's by Fritz Leiber, who is a, a great science fiction and fantasy author. I think I remember from, was it the an Edgar Rice Burroughs biography? I think I read a bit, an Edgar Rice Burroughs biography by John Talafiero, I think maybe, that told a bit of the story of this, that this was originally a screenplay for uh, Mike Henry, Tarzan movie. And that Fritz Leiber was given the, was given the ability to flesh out the screenplay into a novel. Does this actually tell me? Oh, it does. Oh, <laughs> I don't care. I don't have to be guessing. Written by Fritz Leiber, adopted from the motion picture in color and Panavision, produced by Banner Productions. From a script by Claire Huffacker, uh, starring Mike Henry as Tarzan. Okay, this doesn't have pictures. No, it doesn't. Uh, Mike Henry was statuesque as Tarzan. I thought he was, uh, the whole production, the whole approach that they took with with his movies, bringing Tarzan into the swing and hipster age, making him a kind of a loincloth James Bond, I thought that was a bad idea. And then that idea was taken up by the Tarzan TV show starring Ron Eli. But it, it's, it's like I always say, whether it's with Shakespeare or anything else, Tarzan doesn't need your help. Okay, if you stick to Tarzan, which no movie has ever done, but if you stick to Tarzan, you won't go wrong. There's a reason why this character was so phenomenally popular, and it isn't your late Johnny Come Lately ideas. <laughs> but, uh, but I don't think I've ever read this. So, and I'm a huge fan of, of the author, of not Edgar Rice Burroughs, but uh, our Mike Huffaker, or whoever that is, but Fritz Leiber. I don't think I can even imagine what it would be like to read him writing Tarzan. Uh, then we have science fiction, classic science fiction. This is Starman Jones by Robert Heinlein. I've never seen this paperback before. Is this a UK edition? This might be a UK edition. Well, it says it says Dell. It doesn't. Well, I don't remember this. I had this once upon a time with I think uh, a Michael Whelan cover or Dower K. Sweet cover. This is just Heinlein YA. Uh, it, it's always very good. A, a, a young boy who goes to the stars unexpectedly and finds his destiny there. I haven't read this in forever. I read it at, when it was re was reprinted, I think, by Del Rey. Mark Richardson would probably know. He probably has the paperback. You'll certainly recognize the cover. Uh, this doesn't look anything like the one that I read, but I read that until it fell apart, so I'm happy to have it again. Uh, and then the, uh, the last mass market paperback is this thing. This is by John Dalmas. And it is called the Yingling. <laughs> Very evocative cover. I figured for a dollar you can't go wrong. I have no idea what's going on on that cover. It looks like one barbarian is treating these other two barbarians to his fastball. Maybe he's in the Boston Red Sox? I don't know. That's exactly the position. Uh, but what do we got here? Earth 2801. Good Lord. Long time from now. Racked by petty rivalries, splintered into warring factions, the tribes of Europe cannot unite against the evil legions of Kazi the Undying. A hero, a yingling, must arise or Europe fall forever. There's still a Europe? 2800? Uh, they call him Nils, a fair youth with an iron arm of a seasoned warrior or a best-selling pitcher. Uh, a leader of men from the dark lands of the barbarians. Only Nils possesses the supernatural power to see into the mind of Kazi the Undying. Only Nils can unite the European tribes against the imminent attack of Kazi's terrible hordes. Nils must claim the title of Yingling and at once. 
but what war chief will give credence to a stripling's boast? Uh, okay, so I don't think I've ever read this, or if I did, I gotta confess, something about this is sounding familiar. This came out in 1969. Is it possible that this was reprinted? This strikes, this strikes me as the kind of thing that would never be reprinted. But I could swear that I remember this sounds vaguely familiar. Did this have a sequel? With a uh, Daryl K. Sweet or Michael v or Mike or uh, Mike Wheelan, Wheelan cover? Again, I'm tripped up by a different cover, just like with this thing. I think I may know this author's work, but not with this artwork. Uh, but anyway, uh, like I said, one of the fun things about the Brattle is that you can just operate on a whim out there in the sale lot. You can just, if it's a dollar, you can just grab it. It's, who knows? It will almost certainly bring you more than a dollar's worth of entertainment. So what, how can you go wrong? Uh, then I got this thing. I think I saw a copy of this uh, up at the old house in Vermont when I was visiting Mark, Rich Mark Richardson. I don't know. Maybe it was a mass market paperback or an old battered, battered old hardcover. I've had this thing a million times. I really, really enjoy it. This is Robert Audrey's book, The Territorial Imperative. I think the last time I had this, it was a mass market paperback, and it didn't survive my reading. And this trade paperback is a little bit stiff. See, we've got illustrations all over here. Uh, this is a little bit uh, stiff. This might not survive more than one reading either, but it was a dollar. So, you know, I grabbed it. I, I, I This came out, oh God, what, half a century ago? More than that? Uh, 1966, and uh, it was wildly popular about territoriality in animals, including man. Uh, and it's really, really good reading. Uh, Ardrey did another book, uh, African Genesis, which is also really, really good reading. But this was the only one I found. When I saw it, I was kind of hoping that there'd be a companion trade paperback of African Genesis, but I didn't see it out there. Uh, then uh, we have Jack Rudlow's book, uh, The Time of the Turtle. This is almost a perfect soup to nuts natural history of turtles. Almost. Uh, the author was, uh, he's a terrific writer. Fantastic raconteur, a bit of a crackpot, but uh, I I had this book as uh, a hardcover eons ago. When, when did, actually, when did you come out? Let's find out. Um, this is dedicated to Turtle Mother and her allies on turtle beaches everywhere. Wow, 1979. Okay, so I, I had, see, it's, we've got illustrations and all, all throughout, just like with the Territorial Imperative. I read this. I've read this a couple of times, but I think there was a hardcover, maybe a big illustrated hardcover, if I remember correctly. I think I know that I've never had a copy that looked like this, so uh, so I grabbed it. So two nature things, but there are other nature things. I noticed a few other things. Then this next one I did not get at the Brattle. I'm just noticing now that it's here in the pile. I grabbed it from a local free, a little free library when I was out on a walk with the bean. Uh, just a perfect condition copy of Pat Frank's novel *The Last Babylon*. This one with an introduction by David Brin, that I don't think I've ever read. I, I sold this in bookstores. This is one of the great post-apocalyptic novels. I sold this in bookstores and never got a copy for myself because I had uh, the standard old mass market paperback. I don't have that standard old mass market paperback anymore. It probably died. I have an ebook, and I believe the ebook has that standard old mass market's cover on it, but I don't have the book. Uh, so. I grab this. I'll read the, the David Brain introduction and probably get sucked into the book as well. Uh, and that is all of the hardcovers, except for the very last thing we'll do, which is oversized. It is hardcover, but it's oversized. And then this next one is uh, Nature. It's a little bit battered. I'm going to fix it up just a bit, but it's not for me. Uh, we've already seen this on this channel. This is Douglas Fairbain, A Squirrel Forever, about a man who adopts a squirrel and uh, has all sorts of... Uh, this thing has all sorts of illustrations, but also photographs as well, right? There, there are photographs as well, I feel certain. Yes. Uh, <laughs> squirrel getting a brush with a toothbrush. Uh, this is an utterly charming book. I have a copy in the little book room. This would certainly be a keeper. But I'm going to fix it up and send it to Deb up in Maine. I, think, I don't know if she's read this or not. I think she would really, really like it. And there's precious little that is better than getting books in the mail. Especially, if I do say so myself, getting books in the mail from Hyde Cottage. That is a wonderful feeling. <laughs> so I'll, I'm going to send her that. I'm also going to send her this. I have a copy of this, but I found the hardcover of The View from Lazy Point by Carl Safina. 
This is more uh, natural history. This is absolutely wonderful. And it also has uh, black and white illustrations throughout. Uh, I have the paperback. I am uh, generously blurbed on the paperback. So, of course, that's the, that's the edition that I have. But I'll, I'll send this uh, up to Maine. I think those two, uh, Squirrel Forever and View from Lazy Point, I think that would make a nice package for, for Deb. And I bet she'll, if she hasn't read them, I bet she'd enjoy them. Uh, no, let's, let's just barrel on. We have, we have more books here. I found uh, an old anthology. I went back and forth on it, but then finally I grabbed it because this is, this is a thing that happens to me at the Brattle far too often. I, ought to, I know the perfect way to avoid it. Uh, often I will be out in the sale lot and I will pick something up and I will be looking at it and I'll be thinking, do I remember this? Or this seems really intriguing. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of loaded up with books. I don't know. I might put this back. I don't know why I do that. That is always a mistake. Always. If it, even the slightest whim tells me to get the book, I should get it. If I don't want to keep it, I have plenty of opportunities to dump it down the line. But I should get it. And I was I was hemming and hawing over this thing, and then finally I realized, right there in the moment, standing there in the in the sale lot, I realized, no, this is you're going to regret this if you leave it behind. So I got this anthology. This is edited by Arnold Gingrich, and it is The Armchair Esquire. And this is... Uh, selections from Esquire magazine over the first century of its existence. So you have Ernest Hemingway, J.D. Salinger, Scott Fitzgerald, uh, Alberta Moravia, Ezra Pound, Camus, John Dos Passos, Arthur Miller, Sinclair Lewis, E.E. E. Cummings, Edgar Lee Masters, D.H. Lawrence, Nelson Algren, Evelyn Waugh, John Steinbeck, Bernard Shaw, Saul Bellow, Norman Mailer, H.L. Mencken, Gorky. You have a lot. There, there's a lot of things in here, and a lot of the things will be things that they wrote on spec for Esquire. So I might not have ever seen it. I might not have seen a lot of what's in here, even though I'm fairly familiar with the writings of a lot of the authors in here. This was a, this is from, uh, what, 1970? When did you come out? Uh, oh, no, no, 1958. And this is, was born solely of the fact that the, the powers that be at Esquire magazine said, how about we differentiate ourselves from the rest of the magazine world by actually paying our writers instead of just promising them or treating them to lunch? Uh, and so they got the top talent of the day for many days, for many decades. I didn't want to leave this behind. It's in a little bit of rough shape. I will, I will uh, clean it up, fix it up, put a cover on it, and uh, I'm sure that I will get a dollar's worth of reading out of it. I'm absolutely positive that I will. Uh, then this next one was the find of the day. Usually every battle trip has a find of the day, and it's purely idiosyncratic to the person. I love these things. Is this Avenel? Yes, it is. At, for a long time, Avenel did a whole bunch of hardcover omnibus volumes. We've seen a lot of them on this channel where they would just pick an author and give you a selection of their work with an originally commissioned cover illustration. They weren't much to write home about, uh, but I wish I had them all. I remember when we got remaindered sets of Avenel omnibus editions at the bookstore, and I just I thought... No, I don't want these because I want the individual works. If I like the author, I'll get their individual works. But I love these things. And uh, I found one today. This is really the, the find of the day of uh, Earl Biggers, Charlie Chan. So this has uh, The House of the Key, which was the, the debut. This has the Chinese parrot behind that curtain, the black camel and keeper of the keys. And I just, I think these are terrific. I have a whole shelf of... Uh, of these old Avenel editions, so this one will just will just add to that uh, until I find a whole bunch of them. There was another one there uh, at the Brattle out in the sale lot today. There was, I don't know if it was Avenel, but it was one of the, along the same lines. It was a big one volume omnibus of uh, three Robert Ludlum books. But I, you know, that's the difference between a collector and an enthusiast. I am an enthusiast for these old Avenel hardcovers or something like them. You know, whatever whatever the the reprint house name was at the time. I'm a fan of these things. They go on the shelf. They look good together. They they have given me lots and lots of enjoyment. But I'm not a collector of them. So I'm not going to get a volume of them by an author I know I don't like just because it's in that format. I've fallen into that trap from time to time, and it always ends up with bloat on the shelf. So I got this one. I think I might reread one of these, and I don't think it'll be the first one. I think I'll just pick one. Maybe behind that curtain. I'll pick one at random. Charlie Chan mysteries are terrific. Somebody on BookTube uh, a couple of years ago 
discovered that. I was watching their videos, and it was a classic booktube moment where I was watching their videos and thinking, oh, you know, your enthusiasm about this is making me want to go back to these books. And I, I did, and it was totally justified. Uh, then this next one is uh, a rebuy. You've seen it on several library tours here. I uh, It showed up on a library tour, I think, a year ago, and uh, one of you asked me to send it to you, and so I did. <laughs> so I pulled it off the shelf, pulled all the stuff that was in it out of it, and sent it to you. Uh, but I found another copy, so I, once again, I will I will clean this up and put a cover on it. This is Margaret Leach's book, In the Days of McKinley. Her big uh, book that won the Pulitzer Prize, uh, her biography of President McKinley, who just recently, just five or six years ago, had another new biography, a new biography, uh, by Robert Mary, I think, was the author of that, and it was terrific. I sang its praises uh, in print, and I believe I'm blurbed on the paperback. Uh, but I really love this book. This book has a uh, an eloquence to it that is, of a type that is simply lost in the present day. There are almost no writers who write like this. Oddly enough, Carl Safina is one of them. Uh, but definitely, you know, there's no harm at all in having two McKinley biographies, and definitely I wanted this one. I, I gave away my old copy uh, from the biography shelf, uh, just explicitly thinking the Brattle will provide. I will see it again, and I, will, I you know the person I'm sending it to is never going to see even one copy, much less have a, a confident expectation of two. So that's why I did it. That's typically why I send things to uh, to all of you, because I'm I'm uh, you know a handful of you notwithstanding, I'm in a better position than most of you to have a chance of seeing these things again. So I might as well give you the copy that I found and wait for another one. And I did. I found this. So I will be, I'll be very loving about it. I will put a cover over it. Then we have a couple of uh, oversized things. Now, this next one is in perfect condition. It's, a, it's a, an oversized hardcover with a library you know, jacket on it already of a thing that I've already had, a thing that I've already hauled on this channel. I hauled it on this channel, and one of you said, you know, uh, I would really, really like to have that. I live in a book desert. I don't trust people on the Internet. I, I'll never see a copy. Is there any chance at all if I pay for shipping? Of course, the answer is almost certainly going to be yes in a situation like that. And, of course, I'm going to pay for shipping. I shipped out books today. I ship out books all the time. Every time I leave the house, I mail books. But I found another. I never. I knew the Brattle would provide. I knew I'd find another copy of this, but I didn't think it would be just perfect like this. Uh, this is Peter Arno. This is The Lady in the Shower. A collection he was a New Yorker art cartoonist and this is a collection of his famous work and the uh, the title refers to uh, his most famous cartoon so we, he does a lot of really great stuff they really really are terrific uh, but I want to show you his his most famous one uh, Oh God! I'm looking at these things, just loving them. <laughs> just loving them. Oh, uh, uh, let's find. Oh God, these are all so good. <laughs> let's find uh, the one that is the reason for the cover. It'll probably be smack in the middle of the book. I went through this. You think I'd remember where it is? But. Uh, <laughs> two taxi drivers yelling at each other and the whole point of the, it has no caption the whole point of the cartoon is that the hapless customers are just looking at each other <laughs> and nothing there's no no chance for them to do it to do anything they just have to wait uh, Don't tell me that because I'm looking for it, I'm not going to find it. <laughs> That's, that would be that would be bitter. That would be extremely bitter. Maybe not though. Well, I'll show if I don't find it, I'll show you another one. Um, just for the fun of it, because these are so good. These are all so much fun. Very very uh, heavy lines. Very lots and lots of ink. New Yorker cartoonists don't do this kind of work anymore. Uh, 
Well, I'm not going to find it, but that's all right. Let's look at another. Let's look at another. Uh, let's look at another one. <laughs> this is a, a priest on TV which once upon a time did happen in America, it doesn't happen anymore. And he's saying, remember, a, a sermonette, not a sermon. <laughs> this, uh, and the back cover is, I'm sorry, sir, we can't be responsible for a bee in the peonies. <laughs> he got stung on the nose. Uh, I have a soft spot for a New Yorker cartoonist, so this will be a lot of fun to live with. And it'll go on a spot, just like in the days of McKinley. I, I got rid of it in the confident expectation that the brattle would provide, and it did. So, I can I can make space for it. Uh, and then the last one is another. The last thing we'll look at is a paperback. This is volume number twenty nine of uh, Prince Valiant. <laughs> it just was sitting there out in the sale lot, so I grabbed it. This, these oversized, full color reprints of the Adventures of Prince Valiant. This one featuring a rather distinctive looking dragon that thing on the cover is the rather distinctive looking dragon i don't remember that i've ever read this there must be a story behind it uh on why it would look that way why it looks so dopey <laughs> but we shall see uh we shall see i'm a huge fan of prince valiant i don't i looked again with uh, as with some of these other things i looked uh because of what i said because sometimes books are sold altogether so when I saw this, my first thought was, I want this, first of all, for a dollar. But my second thought was, uh, what if there are others out here? It, it, it's possible that they would all be together. If, they, if someone sold 20 of these things to the Brattle, I'll take all 20. And maybe if I see one, that means others are out there. I felt the same thing uh, about this. I thought maybe a lot of times people who have these old omnibus editions will have many of them. So I looked around. I only saw this and the... Uh, the Robert Ludlum. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm not. They'll show up eventually. And even if these things don't, this will be enjoyable to read. Uh, so that was it. That was my uh, that was my Brattle book haul for today. Let's see how what kind of esteemed pyramid we do. We have Prince Valiant and Peter Arno. We have uh, Margaret Leach, who won the Pulitzer Prize for this book. She won, as she used to say, as she used to quip, she's won, she won two Pulitzer Prizes uh, because she won the Pulitzer Prize, I think, in 1960 for the days of McKinley. And she also married the son of the man who invented the Pulitzer Prize. So she, she won two Pulitzer Prizes in her life. Then uh, a collection of Charlie Chan novels. We have The Armchair Esquire. We have View from Lazy Point. We'll go up to Deb in Maine. We have a Squirrel Forever. That will also go up to Deb. We have Alas Babylon in this new trade paperback. We have Time of the Turtle, Natural History, Illustrated Natural History of Turtles, The Territorial Imperative, big conversation starter 70 years ago. We have The Yingling, <laughs> a science post-apocalyptic adventure story, Starman Jones, uh, Robert Heinlein YA, uh, Tarzan and the Valley of Gold by Fritz Leiber. What will that be like to read? Uh, and finally, uh, A Demon in My View by Ruth Randall that I mainly got for that lovely cover, although it once again makes me pine for the fact that there aren't, uh, there isn't a, a booktube murder mystery event going on every single month. I have to wait for March Mystery Madness. I don't know if I'll wait that long. I'm probably going to uh, pick a couple of these things to read tonight. That's another ritual of the battle with me. In addition to going with whims, because it's if the book's a dollar, you can indulge your whims, and in addition to looking for keepers, uh, I also go through the ritual of deciding which thing will be the thing, at least one thing, that I read that night. Uh, and I don't know what this will be. I could polish off the Ruth Rendell. I'm really curious about the uh, the Tarzan thing. And also uh, a Charlie Chan novel. So it'll all depend. I, my, my reading night is hours and hours and hours away from shaping up. So we, we will see what it looks like when we get closer to it. Uh, but anyway, that is my Brattle Hall for today. Um, this is Wednesday, so I doubt I'll be back to the battle this week. I really do, unless I have more errands, but I think they can wait until next week. So I'll wrap this up for now, and I will see you then. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.